In the past few episodes of American Artifact, we have featured bring back items from the soldiers, sailors, and marines who fought in the Pacific during World War II. The Pacific was a different kind of war that reached a level of brutality that can't be fully understood by those of us who weren't actually there. Among the souvenirs were the popular items like flags and helmets and the weapons that you see in other theaters. But the savage nature of the fighting that took place in the Pacific resulted in a desensitization that in some cases led to souvenirs that might be considered a little dark by today's standards. They were considered dark by the standards of the time. These things might make us uncomfortable. They might be controversial. But by looking at these items, we can not only learn about the history, but also about the extremes of human nature. show you some really amazing artifacts that were taken by American soldiers in the Pacific Theater. Um, a lot of these came from crashed planes and also uh, killed in action Japanese soldiers. Um, it, there was a tradition of course of taking war trophies by American soldiers and other soldiers and um, th some of the most interesting ones in my opinion are ones that are, are um, tagged or noted by the American soldiers. So we're gonna, we're gonna go down the line here. There's quite a few things here, but this is some items that were taken from a, a, a dead Japanese officer. And uh, this came together, and uh, you have some propaganda pieces here. There's some cigarette packs. There's some money that was taken off of this guy and some uh, paperwork here. This, is, um, this, this folds out with some really interesting Japanese writing on it, but um, this is this is the kind of stuff that American soldiers would send home or keep and send home later. Um, it, it, it's interesting because a lot of times you get into this kind of stuff in in groupings, and there's there's just no information at all. And it's, it's cool that this has at least some kind of a notation. Now this came from a scrapbook that had fallen apart, um, and and there were several items in it. But I'm going to show you some. Pretty unusual items. This, this is some fabric from a wing of a bomber, a Jap Japanese bomber from New Guinea. And, and this, this is an information plate from a plane. Th this is from a pilot. It says pilot's bo uh, bomber. Um, so this is like from, from a pilot's helmet, I guess, but it, but it looks like the liner of a helmet, actually. Um, but it's, it's great to have that kind of notation. And it has, it has March of 44 and where it was recovered. This is the skin. It says fabric from a, a bomber brought down. Um, it's kind of hard to read that, but you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's also brought down by Ak Ak, uh, March 15th, 1944. So it's, it's actually got it, the tag here and directly on the piece. Now this is obviously um, aircraft skin and it was taken by that guy. And I, I really like aircraft skin. It's really interesting. We have several pieces of it. Moving on, this is from the same guy. Um, this is really crazy. I, I've never quite seen anything like this. It says, this bag, meaning this, was found on an enemy dead soldier. Bag, bag contained A, which is this, a lock of hair from wife or mother, B, a small sack of crematory ashes, probably from the faint, same person as the hair. And the soldier wrote, very rare, interesting, um, kind of weird. Um, you know, these guys would, the Japanese soldiers would carry those as memories of their, their mother or their wife or some kind of family member. And then this piece has some helmet stars. Now, that, was a, that was one of the things that these guys did. They would take the stars off the helmets and they would also take the collar insignias from the dead Japanese soldier. And this guy was starting to get a little collection going of it.
While we are on the subject of war trophies taken from the bodies of Japanese soldiers, uh, I thought that we might as well go ahead and uh, address something else. If you look at these pictures, you can see that skulls were also taken as trophies. And uh, we, we would look at this today and say that that's, that's a, a pretty dark and highly questionable practice. It, it was the same during World War II. Uh, there, there was a move made to put a stop to this kind of stuff. But there, were, there was a lot of propaganda before the war, or at the beginning of the war, that kind of dehumanized the Japanese people. And then whenever you get into combat, uh, well, you become even more uh, desensitized. And here's a picture of a couple of uh, servicemen, um, well, frankly, just boiling the skulls of the Japanese. Now, some people might look at this and say uh, that, you know, the, the U.S. was uh, just as bad as the, the Japanese. And that's, that's simply not true. That's a, a silly thing to say. Uh, but that's not to say that there weren't things that happened that, uh, in retrospect, probably shouldn't have. One item that we haven't talked about on the American Artifact series so far is the Thousand Stitch Belt. Uh, this is also known as a Sinanbari. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, but these are like good luck things that would be sent along with the Japanese soldiers. And what would happen is you would have Japanese women who would go in and each individual woman would put her own stitch into this belt. And there are literally a thousand stitches on these thousand stitch belts. And the idea was that if the soldier wore this into battle, uh, well then he would he would be protected and, and bullets wouldn't hurt him. On this one, this is uh, exceptionally unique because there are these little prayer strips where they would go to uh, different shrines and, and monks would, would send these along uh, with the Japanese soldiers. This one uh, is unique in another way in that it is kind of fashioned in the design uh, of a tiger. Uh, I've never seen one like this. I'm going to show you another grouping here. This this all came together. It was according to the notes that was came with it. It came from the same soldier, meaning all these items came from one soldier. And uh, this is another thousand stitch belt. This is the more common type that you see. It has the Japanese writing here and the rising sun symbol here and on the other side it has the thousand stitches. Now in the notes it said that this, these holes were created with um, by gunshot or bullets or shrapnel whether it was or not I'm not sure but that's what it said. Um, there's also a dog tag here that's very blood stained. Um, there's a shoulder strap here that was taken this, this little bag here is, is, contains a whole bunch of little prayer things, kind of like that were on the other th thousand stitch belt that we saw. Um, but these are paper versions of them. Um, inside it has those messages if you open them up. Now these look like cigarettes, but they're not. Um, they have also those kind of messages inside. They're, this is actually what's inside of these things. And again, I, I believe those are the things that they would get up at the uh, temples from to be for protection or blessings. Um, there's also some coins and um, some uh, compass and some other um, collar tabs here. And this came with it. This is a collar tab. It looks like there's a razor. This is a broken razor. Um, that's the head, and then there was a handle there. Um, very interesting grouping for sure and supposedly came from the same guy unfortunately there's no real um uh information about it except for it came from uh the philippines i, I believe so other than that we, we don't really know a whole lot about it all right we've got a few more items here that uh, are really close to my heart and uh, that is the the signed flag uh, so here are a couple of silk Japanese flags that were signed by the the guys 
who were in the unit that uh, that operated in these specific areas where the flags were taken. Uh, so if we look here, uh, you can see, well, here was one that was signed by an Ernest Pendleton from Olean, Missouri. Uh, here's one, uh, looks like Ed Dalton maybe. Um, here's, here's Clyde uh, from, from Nashville. Okay, so all of these guys would have served together and uh, would have signed these flags uh, so that the man taking it home could could remember the men that he served with. And then this one here has a, a little bit more of a, uh, oh, I guess a, a design or a rhythm to it. So here's one signed by Harold Bentley or something like that uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, here's another St. Louis guy right here. But you can see all of these were signed you know, in a pattern to kind of coincide with the uh, the rising sun in the in the middle there. Always love seeing these signed flags. This flag is very interesting to me. It's got the Japanese writing on one side, and it's pretty faded. Um, you know, it faded out pretty well. But on the other side, I'm going to flip it around because the American soldiers who captured it put their names on it and it was the weapons platoon it says weapons platoon men and on the on the left side it has these men make up the mortar squad and it has a little illustration of a mortar here and it has a bunch of names um, and then on the other side it has the w the machine gun section and s several names on here as well including Kid Harkins from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, so very interesting. It's, it, it's you know, very interesting to me when, when the men sign the different names on here on a captured flag. And this, this one's in our archive. It's hard to display because obviously you got the Japanese writing on one side and the English-American writing on the other side. But what an interesting piece of history. Right, well, those are just a few of the items that were brought back by uh, soldiers and Marines in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Always interesting to see what caught people's eye and, and what they wanted to bring back and, and how they chose to uh, remember their time in the service. And uh, you can see all of this and all kinds of other interesting artifacts uh, right here at the Gettysburg Museum of History.